let's kick off the list. Top five most avoided fights in boxing and why. Kick it off with Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andrade at number five. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And the reason the fight is, is being avoided is not just because of politics. It's because one side don't want the fight, all right? Jamal Charlo is waiting on his big payday versus Canelo or Golovkin, which it may look like Golovkin may be continuing his route of greatness at 168, which Charlo probably could go up there, and Golovkin may oblige him and follow him uh, in September 2020. They post a fight, and it may have it may happen at super middleweight. It may happen at middleweight, but he's waiting on his opportunity to get the payday versus Canelo. Um, is the reason why, you know what I'm saying? Because Demetrius Andrade is a, is a high risk, low reward. And in a way, in his mind, in my mind, I don't think it's a high risk, low reward. I think it's a great risk. It's the ability to take the play of the middleweight division and put it in PBC hands. It's, a, it's an opportunity for greatness, but, um, Jamal Charlo and or PBC don't believe he can beat Demetrius Andrade. And if they did, if this was a Dennis Hogan over there with a title, the fight would be made. But, at the same time, it's one of the more intriguing fights in black boxing community and in boxing in general, and people want to see it. But um, last time I heard, uh, Andra sent a $7 million offer over, and Charlo hasn't really got back with him. And also, Eddie Hearn said that they can uh, counter offer, and if they can match the offer, Andra will be willing to come over to PBC. But people saying, oh, Andra pulled out versus brother years ago, which is an entirely different situation. But... Like I said before, the fight not happening because, you know, because somebody don't believe they can win. They hold now for a bigger payday for Canelo, and that's what it is. And Demetrius Andrade is just on the, the shitty end of the stick, you know. You know, and also, it may be a situation where Canelo might vacate the title, and uh, Chris Eubanks might be upgraded to super title. So, that's it. Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence um, is, I think, the f it's the fourth on this list, all right? Uh, as far as when you equal avoid, why is it being avoided and on what level? You know, what level? It's really not been an offer made because the two haven't really entered serious talks, okay? Um, so you can't really put it above a lot of the other fights there. Politics, different side of the street, but at the point we know who don't want it. Once again, it's the premier boxing champion side. All of a sudden, now that Crawford's entered the PBC, well, entered the welterweight universe, and he's obtained a title, um, now all of a sudden they want to make Errol Spence the best fights they can make him. And they know that possibly maybe Bob can make a big offer to him, or maybe they don't want to lose the titles that they do have to Terrence Crawford. But obviously, you know, Errol Spence don't want that work right now. He's been putting it off for now, what, going on the second year? Saying that, you know, Errol Spence, I mean, Terrence Crawford need to get a belt. He got a belt, you know, and he need to, you know, he got a belt. I don't know what else he want. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he need to collect three more belts. He waiting on Pacquiao. So, at the end of the day, once again, they holding up the division. Um, last time I checked, to be undisputed, you don't need to get the belts in a particular order. But um, it's Errol Spence. You know, the car accident kind of going to hold him up a little bit more. And he ain't nothing but Keith Thurman Jr., all right? First, he blowing fire. And then when he get competition, now, you know, he moving a little different. But we know who holding the fight up. People don't want to be honest because they Errol Spence tars. But Errol Spence don't want that work. His trainer don't believe he can handle that work. And that's what it is. And I got word from PBC, people that they Asian Terrence Crawford out. So the, the three above it, y'all understand why. But it's 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 the, the fourth most avoidable fight in boxing, in my opinion, out of the fights that people care about. But... You know, at the end of the day, fair game. Floyd waited out a lot of fighters and waited a lot of fighters get old. And that's the Mayweather blueprint. That's what PBC acronym should be. You know what I'm saying? It should be something that do with the Mayweather blueprint. But, hey, it is what it is. Third, Wilder and Anthony Joshua. Now, people might say this is the most avoided fight. But, really, in the grand scheme of things, Wilder made an offer. Ed Eddie's made offers. You know, Eddie and AJ made offers. Wilder made an offer. You know, Eddie got with the zone. He made another offer. In another offer, the zone admitted they dropped the ball. Eddie admitted, you know, to some 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 play. You know, AJ didn't take the fifty million. Obviously, the fight is worth more than fifty million now. So, at the end of the day, it can't really be the biggest duck fight or the most avoided fight because they both made offers to each other. You know what I'm saying? And 
at this point, it's really paying off because the fight is still growing in value, even though AJ lost. The Zone was willing to pay Deontay $100 million for him to come over to the Zone. It could have been two fights or another fight of 40 or two fights of 40 apiece to fight AJ. So the money's still skyrocketing in value. So you really can't call it an avoided fight if they both sides that made uh, they made uh, our offers. You know, but at the same time, you know, most people looking at AJ funny. Some people look at Deontay Wilder funny. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's AJ waiting to Wilder get a fight and doing all the talking. It's AJ who lost to the uh, to Andrew Weeds, the chubby guy. You know, it's AJ who sounds suspect when he was when he was confronted about the fifty million dollars. It's AJ who you know who just looks suspect. At the end of the day, people say, "Why didn't Wilder take the money from the zone?" The zone came out and said they messed up the deal and they weren't honest to Wilder about how much the uh, AJ was getting. So, you know, at the end of the day, people could say, you know, they offered, they both offered each other. So it can't really be the most avoided fight once y'all see the next two. And given the size, given the given the history of the politics, how Eddie Hearn really tried to uh, bamboozle uh, uh, Al Heyman. All right? So at the end of the day, don't forget Al Heyman made Anthony Joshua a world champion when he could have made Deontay Wilder a world champion. So... Those are the facts. You know, when you look at the politics, this may be one of the bigger bigger fights that people want to see, even with the loss to uh, with Andy Ruiz, though. But, hey, move on. I think this is one of the bigger – I think this is even bigger because they're on the same side of the street. You know what I'm saying? And you can make a case for this being number one. They're on the same side of the street, and they still can't make a fight. And it makes no sense. They both were champions, the two top champions in their division. Obviously, Gary Russell did fight for Silo Machenko. Um, he did lose, came back, won a WBC title. Uh, Leo lost to Carl Frampton, became a WBA title holder. And, you know, they got the same management. They fight under a premier boxing champion, same advisor. And the fight just can't be made. It makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? So this is the number two biggest um, avoided fight that could be made when you put politics into it. And, you know, quite simply, you got a black man in Al Heyman that refused to get Gary Russell the big fights and refused to force Leo Santa Cruz to fight Gary Russell. Leo Santa Cruz said he he fight who they told him to fight. And obviously they ain't told him he had to fight Gary Russell. You know what I'm saying? It's to the point where he would rather go up and fight Javante Tank Davis at 130 or a catch weight. And I think that's embarrassing, you know, to to his, you know, to his to his father, to his to his heritage and everything. But, you know, whatever it is, he just refused to fight Gary Russell. I guess the tank I think it boiled down to Tank bring more money to the table, so he'd rather get wrecked by Tank. Or maybe he 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 grazed Tank as a hot, more hyper, higher caliber fighter, a more difficult fighter than Gary Russell. You know what I'm saying? Most people think he got a better chance at beating Gary Russell. You know what I'm saying? But he believes otherwise. I think it's more the reward versus, you know, Gary Russell not staying active and just wanting the big fights and fight when he want to fight. But I think given the politics in this fight, you can make a case for this being um, the biggest avoidable fight out there, in my opinion, man. And, you know, Gary just got to keep his head up and just stay active this year, man. He need to be in there at least three or four times. And, you know, after Leo lose, and if Leo continue wanting to fight after he fight Tank, if that's the next fight, I guarantee you after Leo lose, he's going to be looking for a taste versus Gary Russell, especially if Gary still hold a title, go to 130 or get a title if he started to unify a title. Watch what I tell you. Once these dudes lose, they owe. Then they get brave and they ain't scared to do nothing else. And the biggest, most avoidable fight is Tank versus Lomachenko. Because his promoter said they was willing to throw Tank in there with Lomachenko when he's mad at Tank. And because at the end of the day, Tank moved up in weight. He moved, he he missed Lomachenko at 30. Now he moved into Lomachenko weight class. Now he's trying to move down to 30 to fight Santa Cruz and have Santa Cruz move up to 35. Why would you move up to a dude that's about to unify the division if you have no ambitions on fighting him? Not even for Undisputed or whatever their version of Undisputed is with the WBC franchise title. It makes no sense to me. Um, at the end of the day, what makes this, I gave this the edge over Gary and over Leo Santa Cruz is that Javante Tank Davis talks so much shit about, oh, I'm the best in the division. I'm the cash cow. Uh, um, every, you know, I'm, I'm the most popular guy out there. I'm the best. I'm pound for pound when I beat Gamboa. If you pound for pound, you got an opportunity to beat, you know, they pound for pound white Jesus and, uh, Vasyl Lomachenko. You could really make your stamp pound for pound. You could really put, you know, weight behind those words. So, in my opinion, this is the most um, avoidable fights when you put the politics and you put everything in the backstory in it. It's the biggest, most avoidable fight out there because 
Javante saying he the best. He got an opportunity to bring, prove that he the best in the whole pound for pound universe, and he refusing to really step up and take the fight. You know what I'm saying? He being protected more than anybody else on here, um, almost more than Leo Santa Cruz to us. He is being more protected than Leo. Leo didn't at least for Carl Frampton. You know what I'm saying? So he the most protected fighter on the list, bar none. But I guess a lot of people see kind of the uh, the correlation between all of these. So. I kind of let y'all figure that out. But don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to the email. If you got business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video requests, keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation, the link's in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Uh, other than that, let me know what you guys think about the list. Got any add-ons? Got any differentials in there? Put it in the comment section. One time for the one time. It's your boy, CJ Goodfella. Goodfella Sports TV.